How's it going everyone, John Castillo here. Today, we're talking about the new, newer, the new, newer, the newer CB60 RGB, their new RGB light. Uh, I'll also be comparing it with some aperture lights that I happen to have here around the studio. That's actually the newer light right now that's doing the blue thing. Anyways, let's get into it. So right off the bat, I absolutely love this light and I've had it for just around a week at this point. But the reason why I like it so much is that it fills a gap in the light arsenal that we have at the moment. So we don't have a good, cheap, powerful point source RGB. And the reason why is because there aren't many out there. Yes, you can find tube RGB lights and you can find uh, panel RGB light panels, but a point source RGB, especially at this price point, there just isn't one. When I was shopping for an RGB point source light a few months ago, I was looking at the Aperture 600C, which is the only RGB point source light that Aperture makes. I think Ameren doesn't have one either. And that is like $2,500. I'm not sure, I'll put the price here on the screen. So in any case, 10 times the price of the CB60. The only comparable light I was able to find on the market is the Godox SZ150R. And even that one is about double the price. This is the price of the Godox, I'll put it on the screen right now. Now, when I was shopping around for RGB lights, we did invest in the Nova P300C, which is a light panel, it's not a point source light. And it gets the job done for many instances. The only thing is that it's a much more expensive light and I end up using it in scenarios like a splash like this, where it's used at 5% capacity and it just feels a little silly to be using like a $1,000 light for 5% output. And I know that I'm not alone in this because I do have a buddy of mine who also has a Nova and he says the exact same thing. Enter the newer CB60 RGB, a $220 US point source light, which has a Bowens mount, meaning that I can still use my aperture soft boxes, I can use my barn doors, I can use all of the light modifiers that I currently own. When I start saying things like that, I think it becomes very clear why it is that I love this light so much. Good price, good mount, RGB. Anyways, enough of me hyping on the price and versatility, let's talk about the light itself. At 70 watts, it is decently bright. Here you can see the CB60 RGB set to 5600 Kelvin, about two meters away from my face. My Canon EOS R6 is at its native ISO of 800 f2.8. The light is outputting 100%. Now this is with the iris adjusted for proper exposure. For comparison, here is a side-by-side -side of the CB60 RGB with the Aperture 120D2, both at 100% and positioned in the same place. And now, same thing, but iris adjusted for exposure correction. As we can see, the aperture is about half a stop brighter. Lastly, here's the CB60 RGB once more at 100%, but this time with a white balance of 3200. And just for fun, some RGB. So of course, it's not as bright as the Aperture 120D2, but if you consider the versatility and the fact that it's much cheaper, it's still a fantastic light to have in your arsenal. It's a great fill, it's a great splash, it's a great hair light, it's just great. Next, let's talk about the case it comes in. There is none, there is no case. <laughs> so Newer is well known for cutting corners wherever they can in order to keep their price competitive. So this is what the light comes in, not much to it, just some styrofoam cardboard box. Included, you'll find the light and an IC cable. That's it. Not even a remote. Well, at least not in the kit I bought. I think there's a kit that comes with the remote and a newer stand and a softbox as well. But all of that being said, I do find that newer does try to cut corners in the right places. Like, sure, the light doesn't come with a case, but you can buy a case. And in fact, you can buy three lights and one case, which is a lot better for hauling around instead of paying for a case with every single light. I get it. And sure, the light doesn't come with a remote, but the app works pretty well, which is 
a great segue to talking about the app. The app works surprisingly well. And I say surprisingly not because I was expecting it to work poorly, but when I went to download it, it was it was rated 2.5 stars. But I have to say, it took me about five minutes to get the app up and running. And that's because I had the light set to like the Bluetooth switch on the back. And I tried to connect my phone to the light via Bluetooth, but it wasn't showing up for a while. And after a while, I saw this newer Infinity logo, both on my phone, as well as on the back of the light. So I decided, okay, well, I guess I'll press newer Infinity. And then it just automatically worked. And apparently, Newer Infinity is their proprietary connection that allows you to connect up to 255, I believe, 255 devices simultaneously. On the app, you've got CCT mode, HSI mode, and scene mode. And with each one of these, you can adjust the brightness, uh, green magenta hue, white balance. In HSI mode, you can adjust the saturation or the hue. And in scene, you get some cool effects. Now, once you select a certain look, let's say, for example, this, which is the light splash I have in the back right now, I can click on the star, which saves it to the favorites. And then I go to the little box on the right and you'll see all of, as you can see, I, I labeled one of them John's fave already when I was testing out the light. You can always rename this uh, and then you can save them for like quick mode right here. It just, it works very well. No complaints on the app. Next, let's talk about build quality. This is the place where I'll give it to Aperture. Their lights feel much better quality. I believe they're made with aluminum alloy. The newer casing, it's just some sort of plastic. That being said, unless you're dropping your lights all the time, I wouldn't really worry about it. Other places where the aperture shines and build quality is it has cable locks for both the DMX connection as well as the power. Uh, the newer is just an IEC, which at least it's an IEC easy to replace. So in terms of build quality, you know, I guess that's another place where they cut corners, but for the price, again, for the price, I am okay with it. It still feels sturdy enough. And as I mentioned, unless you're dropping your lights all the time, I wouldn't really worry about it. So final thoughts. I mean, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but what more is there to say? It's a $220 RGB Bowen mount point source light with an app. And it's a, it's a fantastic light to have in your arsenal. I am very happy with it. Thank you, Newer, for making this product. Clearly, it was necessary in this field of LED lights. I can tell you're paying attention to the market and videographers, thank you for it. Anyways, that's this for this video. If you made it all the way to this point, I would greatly appreciate subscribing and a thumbs up. That'll always go a very long way. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.